Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. It's Monday morning, February the 25th, 2019. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I took a methodical beating this weekend. Lost two fights, but more importantly, got dominated in both. Let's do an autopsy, because that's what it feels like here. Let's do an autopsy and look at Joe Joyce's fight against Bermain Stavern, and then segue into Chris Eubank's dominant victory over James DeGale, one of my favorite fighters. First, I need to give credit where credit is due. You know, it takes a lot, in my opinion, for a fighter in his 30s right in his 30s to rework his game to trust his skills his pattern of performance to a trainer a new trainer and to listen to that trainer as that trainer tells him that some of the things that have worked in the past need to be overhauled now, I was watching the Joe Joyce, Bermain's to Vern fight, and I barely recognized Joe Joyce. The Joe Joyce from the World Series of Boxing, the Joe Joyce in his first few fights, was really stiff, threw punches that were slow and wide. I thought the guy was very beatable. I took Joe Joyce, excuse me, I took Joe Hanks a long shot against Joe Joyce and I really expected Joe Hanks to beat him. Now Joyce in that fight still looked slow to me. Still threw punches with a bit of a loop. Still didn't have a lot of hand speed. He KO'd Hanks in the first round because Joe Joyce does have punching power. Right, this is a guy, after all, who represented the UK in the Olympics. Well, this Joe Joyce, who's now with Abel Sanchez, and this is just great work, folks. I, the boxer, the trainer, this is A-plus stuff. Joe Joyce now has decided that he's going to rely on a jab to set everything up. And folks, he has the jab popping. He has it speeding up the game. Then he's decided that he's going to shorten both hands. In other words, that looping right hand. Joe Joyce now is throwing it straight. It gets there fast. I'm not kidding when I say in his 30s, I'm guessing this guy has increased his hand speed by at least 40%. Not only that, Joe Joyce, who usually is a hunter, he's the guy who's hurting you, right? He's a guy who would hit you and stand there in the pocket. He's now moving after he throws punches. So he's hitting Bermain Stavern, and I'm not saying Bermain Stavern has quick feet or anything like that. Obviously, Stavern is an in-the-pocket guy himself who relies on big shots. But understand, Stavern once held the heavyweight title. Stavern's fought Deontay Wilder twice. I know the second fight was a disaster, but understand that first fight goes the distance. Stavern hung in there against many a contender right and here he just got beaten up and Joyce did it in such a way where Joyce had the much faster hands in other words where I thought there was no advantage for Joyce Joyce with a new style that he's honing now Right? With the new style, Joyce, 
obviously put in a lot of work and he had the much faster hands. The deficits actually became positives for him. And with that punching power and that jab, dare I say, Joe Joyce methodically beat up Remains to Vern and has really changed my opinion of him. I'm not here ready to say that he's, you know, uh, A-plus heavyweight right now. But my goodness, if this guy continues to improve and he's a few years past 30, Right, if he continues to improve, who knows? Who knows what the guy can do? Right? Understand Joyce fought Alexander Usyk in the World Series of Boxing. He looks like a potted plant. He's throwing his punches too wide. If he has this level of timing, and understand, remains to Vern is never in the fight after the opening bell. He's beaten up. I understand the fight goes a few rounds. It's a miracle Stavern lasted the last two rounds of the length of the fight. I think the fight goes eight or nine rounds, right? Understand Joyce looked like he easily could go the distance. He gave an interview after the fight. He didn't even look that winded to me, right? It'll be interesting if he fights guys like Usyk who fought him before and who are expecting to fight the older version of Joyce. It'll be interesting to see how Usyk deals with this new version. Right? I think Joyce might have a problem with guys who have ring coverage. Deontay Wilder, a guy who could be way outside, who could hit him from distance. Because Joyce is upright. He hasn't changed his center of gravity. Right? But understand, if Joyce can collapse the pocket... He's going to own the pocket if he were to fight Deontay Wilder, right? He has a nice jab. He shortened that left hook. That right hand is on the money, folks. It's now a quick, straight right hand. I congratulate him. I was wrong on that fight big time. You know, I'd rather have a fighter lose by first round KO. Think Erickson Lubin in that Jamal Charlo fight, where you could say to yourself, you know what, um, this guy is still an excellent boxer. He just got caught. He was just looking in the wrong direction, right? This is one of those he got caught fights. But when a guy gets destroyed systematically, that's when you know that your outlook on the fight was just 100% wrong. My outlook on the Joyce fight was 100% wrong, as it was for Chris Eubanks' annihilation of James DeGale. Now, let's be clear here, right? Let's just be clear here. I know two of the judges had it two rounds and three rounds, and I know DeGale himself, after the fight, said, well, you know, I was knocked down twice, and one judge had it by two rounds. Who are they kidding? Right? Who are they kidding? James DeGale gets beaten in this fight by at least six rounds. I mean, understand, I'm looking at the fight. I'm rooting for DeGale. In the 10th round, I thought, wow, DeGale needs to knock down Eubank a few times here to get back in the fight. This fight was stunning. Understand, Eubank, the guy who I thought was the non-technician in the bout, Eubank completely takes away James DeGale's offense. I mean completely. Understand, Eubanks is on the hunt. DeGale makes several mistakes. Right? One of them, Paulie Malinaji, who's in DeGale's corner, points out to him round after round. Right, Eubank takes a page out of Sugar Ray Leonard and Ali's playbook and in the last 20 seconds of several rounds turns on the gas. Now understand, this is not happenstance. Eubank has to know that about 2 minutes and 40 seconds have passed in the round. 
because like clockwork, last 20 seconds of the round, Eubank starts throwing a bunch of punches, starts being aggressive, starts outworking the gale. So even rounds that are slow rounds where you're thinking, okay, well, gee, is this round a draw? Who really has the upper hand here? Is the gale winning this round? After the last 20 seconds of the round, it's clear that Eubank has taken it. So you have Paulie Malignaggi screaming to James DeGale in DeGale's corner. And DeGale can't do anything about it. Because DeGale has lost complete control of the pacing of the fight. Eubank is sequential. So there are times where Eubank hits DeGale and DeGale tries to move away. And Eubank follows him. Eubank doesn't give DeGale an opportunity to move away. The lateral movement negated. Practically all movement by DeGale negated. Eubank is so hyper that DeGale tries to clinch him. But understand, this isn't the kind of clinching where I land a right hand and then I say, let me clinch him and tie him up so he can't counter me. Right? Or I'm coming in and I'm doing a Bernard Hopkins. My head's down. I hit him a couple of times. Then I clinch him and I rough him up and I lean him on the ropes. No, this was clinching for defense, folks. The Gale's getting battered. The Gale's solution is to try to clinch. Let me tell you, too. Sometimes the Gale gets battered. He can't even come forward to clinch. He goes backwards. When he goes backwards, Eubank follows him, batters him. Now let's be clear, there's a sequence in this fight that's actually a bit upsetting. Besides the fact that I lost my money on this fight, it's actually upsetting just from a boxing purist's point of view. Eubank follows the Gale to the corner. The Gale's hurt. Eubank hits the Gale, who then falls into the rope. Right, folks, that's a knockdown. If the rope's not there, the Gale's on the canvas. Right, the Gale's lost his balance. The punch has caused the Gale to lose his balance. The referee should have stepped in and should have given the Gale a count. The reason it's important is a few punches later. The Gale takes a knee, folks. That shouldn't have been a 10-8 round. That should have been a 10-7 round. The Gale gets knocked down twice in that round. That's how dominant Eubank's performance is. Let me also say, too, I'm watching the telecast and the crowd starts yelling, Chunky. Apart from Eubank's father, who's clearly a Eubank fan, and Eubank's corner. In his home country, Eubank didn't have a lot of fans in the crowd. Now on the Showtime telecast, the one guy who seemed to see through all the smoke was Al Bernstein. He had Eubank winning the fight big. Right? Winning the fight big. So understand, when they said unanimous decision, and when you understood that one judge had the fight by a wide margin before they even announced the scorecards, you understood that Eubank won the fight because there is no way on God's green earth that James DeGale won this fight by six rounds. But what's disturbing, and it is disturbing, is that this fight really is a 9-3 fight for Eubank. Right? Eubank dominates the fight. And, of course, this is boxing. The judge that had Eubank only winning by a couple of rounds, how's that remotely possible? Understand, the Gale goes down in another round. The Gale looks so beaten up that at one point Eubank takes a step back. The Gale tries to take a step toward him. And the Gale loses his balance without a punch. Folks, he looked physically beaten up. And this is coming from someone who feels that the Gale's one of the best punchers, excuse me, one of the best boxers he's seen 
over the last seven years. Right? So, let me tip my hat to Eubank. Let me tip my hat to his trainer because his trainer is new to his corner. My advice to Joe Joyce and to Chris Eubank is to not let these trainers out of your sight. These guys are helping your careers. They are lifting your games. The performances both gave this weekend were dominant. And I say that as a guy who lost on both fights. Now that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me point out too that the Gale held on so much and the Gale's doing veteran moves where he's trying to hold Eubank up top right in clinches that there's a sequence in this fight where Eubank gets deducted a point. Folks if a veteran fighter is gonna try to hold you by doing a headlock around your head why shouldn't you be allowed to push him off of you? I know the visual looked bad. But understand, the referee at that point should have realized that the Gale's the one who's doing the excessive clinching. That Eubank should have a right when the guy comes in and tries to grab him around his shoulders to push him off of him. I question even the one Brown deduction that Eubank suffered. Right? I thought this was a wide fight. If I'm the Gale, I do retire. Right? Because the Gale's not going to beat Eubank anytime soon, and this comes after him losing the Truax. Right? And let's face it, too, that rematch where the Gale wins back his title, that could have gone either way. Right, so when you're a boxer and you're at this part of your career where you're losing to fighters and the wins are razor close margins and you're getting beaten up, right, teeth knocked out in the Badu Jack fight, the Gale looks beaten up after both Truax fights. Right here, all I can say is I watch the fight and he hits the canvas three times. Right? Three times. Don't be fooled by the judges scoring, folks. The fight wasn't that close, right? One judge had it right. The other two guys had it way too close. This was a masterpiece. That's what it was. It's a masterpiece by Chris Eubank. He's throwing shorter punches, too, just like Joe Joyce. In other words, Eubank's current trainer, has retooled Eubank's game even though Eubank's in his late 20s. I believe Eubank knows it. That's why he's calling out Billy Joe Saunders who he fought before. Eubank starts better than the Gale. Eubank ends better than the Gale. Eubank is better inside. This is in a fight where the Gale's trying to establish a presence inside and clinching a lot. Eubank is the guy who's dictating the action at the end of rounds. Eubank, of course, is trying punches throughout the fight. In other words, there's a lot of strategy involved in this fight. He's throwing uppercuts. The Gale is able to sidestep the uppercuts for several rounds. Then he lands an uppercut. The Gale almost gets his head taken off. Right? Eubank throws one of the better uppercuts in boxing. The point is Eubank came in with a game plan. Is throwing great uppercuts. He's throwing short right hands. He's moving with the Gale. Right? So the slick lateral movement of the Gale neutralized. He's smothering the Gale when the Gale changes hands. He's not allowing the Gale to land the first punch of sequences. Great performance. I was on the losing side. I was impressed. Two fights. Very impressed by both fighters. Very impressed by both trainers. I'm sitting here shot, feeling like Bermain's Stavern on a Monday morning. 
I'm sitting here shocked that both guys, Eubank, late 20s, Joyce in his 30s, I'm shocked that both guys were able to change parts of their game this late in their careers. That's a revelation. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.